Welcome back to Switzer on Australia's business travel. Now, the travel and accommodation sector under pressure, dwindling tourist numbers and a lack of accommodation in resource boom locations like Brisbane and Perth have put the strain on the hotel market. That's where our next guest comes in. It's times like these that Trent Fraser, CEO of Choice Hotels Australia, steps up to the plate and he joins me now in studio. Trent, look, thanks very much uh, for your time. Thanks, Let's man. start with the company. You're just telling me you've been with them about 10 years, four months or so in the top job here within mm -hmm. Australasia. Yes. Give us a bit of background. Tell us about the, the business. Yeah, look, Choice Hotels have got a great, uh, a great history going back to the late 1930s. Um, first started in the US with uh, three or four quality, uh, three or four properties under the Quality brand. Uh, I think back in those days, James, the average rate was about three dollars twenty a room per night, sort of thing. <laughs> so different to what we see today. But um, and now sitting here today, 70 years later, Choice Hotels International is a global group. We've got 6,200 hotels throughout 33 three countries throughout the world representing some sort of 500,000 odd hotel rooms. Um, we came about being here locally in Australia by Choice International buying what you might remember as Flag International mm. Flag Motels uh, 10 years ago now. And uh, today in this country we've got 280 properties uh, represented by four brands, uh, Econ Lodge, Comfort, uh, Quality and Clarion. Um, so 280 hotels throughout Australia and New Zealand and we're probably the only really truly purely franchised hotel group in the market. I guess that's our, essentially that's our point, of, our point of difference. So we're a 100% owned subsidiary of Choice Hotels International which is a publicly listed company in the US on the New York Stock Exchange. So. And so does Australia, does the, the Australian markets have its own unique sort of qualities if you, I mean as you mentioned operating in a lot of different sort of mm. countries, are there any particular attributes that sort of single out the Australian market that you found? Oh, look, I guess our brands are, because we're a pure franchise organisation, as I mentioned earlier, I guess, and, and we do that globally, that's something that's our philosophy globally, the, um, the brands have a certain level of consistency throughout the world, there's no mm. doubt about that. I guess what we're seeing here lately is probably more of a um, come back to those new development type opportunities. So I think from a, from a, a standards and a, um, and a positioning point of view, we'll see some really good new build properties coming onto the market in our group in the near future. So. Is that one of the, I suppose, interesting aspects of the company as well, the fact that you, know, you go across markets, that you're not a particular high end or low end, and also yeah. regional as well as, you know... Yeah, that's a, look, that's a really good point. I think it's relevant certainly in the times we've all experienced over the last few years yeah. where we've seen a lot of customers um, value seeking. So looking, I mean, understand they need to still do the travel, but really looking for um, better value for their dollar. So we're positioned firmly in that bid market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're certainly clear about the pond that we swim in and, and we have been, I think, really well positioned the last few years to take advantage of that. Certainly our revenues and our profit has, has maintained a steady increase over the last few years. So I think that sort of speaks to the success of the organisation mm -hmm. in tough times and certainly you know, with our spread, as you said, of regional and city areas, um, I guess we're sort of um, we're playing in both areas, if you like, I suppose. So, so um, we're certainly experiencing that two-speed economy that we're all familiar with. Um, but I guess having that spread of properties for us as a company, um, we're not too heavily focused in one area or another. And is that where you expect to see the the most demand and the the ongoing growth within that sort of value area of the market? Yeah, I think so. Look, I think that um, you know we are. Uh, as consumers, you know, certainly, um, you know, uh, moving towards uh, brands. I mean, mm. everything we eat for breakfast, uh, we wear, the, the cars we drive, we're very, you know, getting familiar with, with brands very much so. And I think that it's no different to accommodation. I think people are looking for brands. Um, I think we're firmly positioned for really good growth. There's still 3,000 unbranded properties in this country. So there's a great pool of potential, we think. And the team that we've got within Choice Hotels is an ambitious group and we see some really aggressive um, you know, futures for the property. So, so, so um, acquisitions and so forth and growth within the domestic yeah, market? Yeah, well absolutely. Look, historically, um, you know, getting back to the day one with Choice in the US with sort of three or four properties, the way we've grown globally certainly is organically and that's our mm. most successful way to grow. But um, we've, we've taken on opportunities to acquire groups along the way as well. And indeed, you know, the largest, one of the largest acquisitions was indeed buying the flag organisation, as I said, ten years ago. So we've done that here before and uh, we're now looking at other opportunities in this market where there might be some synergies with what we do, um, certainly to grow, to grow the property numbers. We've got 280 properties at the moment, we could see that going certainly well over 300 and uh, 400's not out of all you know, possibility. And you sort of 
You, you spoke briefly about obviously the, some of the difficulties within the market. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, does that in itself bring up the opportunities? I mean, if you're able to continue earnings growth momentum and, and, and weather the storm mm -hmm. that particularly maybe mm -hmm. distress sort mm -hmm. of other players might come yeah. into on Cisco. Yeah, it's probably been another element to our to our growth and our success, I suppose. In tougher times, I guess, um, all businesses are looking to see what they can do better and where they can go for the security and the comfort mm -hmm. of, of, of a, you know, say, a brand. So we've certainly seen, and we know globally and historically in tougher times, um, we tend to do a lot better from a development point of view, from a recruitment of properties point of view, and we've certainly seen that over the last few years. I guess the, you know, the value proposition for independent Independent property is to um, ask themselves for, you know, X dollars. Can they get the best bang out of that out of that dollar, or can they, or should they invest that with someone like us, um, and take advantage of all the services we can offer? And will they get better value doing that to us? Um, I guess with us is that that's the question for them. Look, obviously, um, well documented some of the the headwinds, if you like, within the space and the broader tourism space. The, mm. the Australian dollar, in particular, one that's that's been highlighted. I mean, how yeah. much of a how much of an impact is that yeah. having? Yeah, look, it's a really good question. I don't know. I don't have the answer. I guess it's something that is certainly out of our control. And mm. I suppose uh, we'd certainly like to see it from a selfish point of view, from our hotel's point of view, come back to, um, I guess, what you'd say is normal levels, um, certainly well below parity. But, mm. you know, I think that um, it's certainly having an impact, certainly on the leisure properties. I mean, we are buying much better value, obviously, travelling overseas. There's some really good uh, deals overseas at the moment. I had a look the other day and, you know, flights out of Perth to Bali. I think there's 16 flights a day from Perth to Bali. So that's what we're competing against. They're not all direct, mind you. Mm. They're via other sort of East Coast cities. But, you know, that's the sort of volumes. There's great deals over there you can have a really good holiday for, for not a lot of money um, and I guess we have got a serious imbalance of inbound versus outbound travellers and that's a real challenge. I think the latest numbers I saw was you know um, 8 million outbound travellers from this country and 6 million inbound so I mean we're becoming a people say an expensive destination I guess it's for us and I'm thinking it's more of a sort of boutique niche destination for international travellers but it's certainly a challenge there's no doubt. Is that the, the problem with the high Aussie dollars you get that, that double whammy effect you get people uh, Overseas travellers may be finding better value somewhere yeah. else because of the Aussie dollar, and you have the domestic people thinking, well, mm. more bang for my buck offshore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there's no doubt. There is no doubt with that. I guess the other thing I would just comment on is that, um, and we're encouraging our properties to remember, is that, um, and we've all heard about you know, the Chinese influx of tourists, and that's mm. going to be a really important element for capital city CBD properties, primarily going forward, we think. We know the Chinese tend to like to stay in capital city markets, mm. travel for the day, come back with a shop in the restaurants are. So, you know, for 600,000 uh, Chinese visitors is expected in the next 12 months, that's exciting and that's terrific for all of us. But, you know, there's 73 million visitor nights in Australia by Australians every year. And I think that's where the opportunity is, certainly for our properties, is to challenge ourselves as to how we get more of those visitors into our hotels. So that's a, a really big number and that's our bread and butter. Mm. It's the domestic visitors staying in domestic properties, obviously. So. And how do you do it? I mean, does a lot have to come down to, I mean, you, you see a lot of the different state governments with their own mm. tourist sort of boards and, mm. and promotions and so forth. I mean, mm. do, you, do, do you see that having an impact? I mean, does more of a responsibility and leading role need to be taken by government? Um, yeah, look, I guess, look, we could go on to talk about IR issues and those sort of things. Mm. I think it's really um, sad to see restaurants and, and bars and those sort of things closed on public holidays, for example. Mm. I think that's a real, a real challenge and hopefully something that we can work through together with government in the future to, to make um, those sort of services open and more available and become more of a sort of a 24-7 uh, operation in this country. But, you know, I think for our hotels what we're saying is that, you know, um, to really, it's back to basics and they've really got to be focusing on, you know, certainly customer service and mm. Standards and and the I guess the physical fit out and nature of the property. So, um, you know, if you're giving your guests a really good experience um, and you're treating them well and their accommodation is comfortable and clean, all those sort of basic things, I guess you've got a better than even chance of getting them back in future. So, and look, with that in mind, moving forward and looking ahead for for choice. I mm. mean, positive and, and confident outlook. I mean, you spoke about mm. growth here domestically. I mean, mm. obviously some some good signs. Yeah, look, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we've got uh, really good backing by our parent company in the US. As I mentioned, we're a public company, you know, market cap's about two and a half, three billion dollars. So we know we've got that um, corporate strength behind us and we are certainly looking for opportunities to grow aggressively um, in the future. Um, certainly organic is 
is the, the, the primary focus, but mm -hmm. we're right at the moment mapping out plans for the next you know, five to ten years. So I think the future is really exciting. I think our method of business is very um, owner-friendly, where you can leverage off all the services we provide, um, you know, from a sales and marketing, distribution, training. We've got a locally-based call centre, for example. So take advantage of all of those um, services but at the same time be able to run your hotel on a day-to-day -day basis as you see fit. Um, so not having to give that away to a, an outside uh, management company necessarily. All right, Trent Fraser, look, it's been fantastic to talk to you. Thanks very much for coming in this evening. Thanks, James. Terrific. Trent Fraser there from Choice Hotels. We're going to go back for a bit of a recap in terms of today's top stories. Uh, Liz Tilly in the newsroom. Thanks, James.